So taking stock, we've now just finished calculating the concentration of the open circle DNA at any given time t. So if we go back to our strategy that we had before, we have now done this first step and we've now done this second step. And what we said that the third part of our strategy was that as soon as we've calculated the concentration of open circle DNA for all time t and the concentration of supercoiled DNA for all time t, we can then use this expression, meaning using the initial conditions of our system, where we know that we only have supercoiled DNA, or at least the total amount of moles in the system is based on the initial amount of supercoiled DNA. And so now that we know the concentration of supercoiled DNA at all time t, we know the concentration of open circle DNA for all time t, and that this concentration or this initial concentration of supercoiled DNA is a constant, then we can solve for the concentration of linear DNA. So let's now make those substitutions and simplify. So what that means then is that I'm going to have my concentration of linear DNA, and that's equal to the initial concentration of my supercoiled DNA. From that I'm going to subtract off the concentration of supercoiled DNA, and from that I'm also going to subtract off the concentration of open circle DNA. That means then my concentration of linear DNA is equal to the initial concentration of supercoiled DNA, and now I can make those substitutions where I know the concentration of supercoiled DNA for all time t is the initial concentration of supercoiled DNA times e raised to the power of the negative of the first rate constant times time. And then from that I can also then subtract off the concentration of the open circle DNA at all time t, which is just equal to the initial concentration of supercoiled DNA times the first rate constant divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant and all that is times e raised to the power of negative of the first rate constant times time minus e raised to the power or the negative power of the second rate constant times time. The first simplification that I'm going to make in order to solve for the concentration of linear DNA is that I'm going to distribute out all of these initial concentrations of supercoiled DNA since there's one at the beginning of each of these terms. So I'm going to have the concentration of supercoiled DNA sitting out here in the front, and then I have all my remaining terms. I'm going to have 1 minus, and then I've got e raised to the power of negative of the first rate constant times time, and from that I'm going to subtract off the first rate constant divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant, and that's all times e raised to the negative of the first rate constant times time minus e raised to the power of the negative of the second rate constant times time. You notice that I've inserted this huge gap, and so what I'm going to do also in this, and this is sort of, this is a part of the second simplification I'm going to make, or ultimately make, is that I'm going to multiply in this spot here the, a term that's the second rate constant minus the first rate constant divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant. So I'm essentially multiplying that second term by 1, even though I have the second rate constant minus the first rate constant divided by itself. But the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm trying to create a common denominator. So I have this denominator here and I have this denominator here. And it's so that I can now join together the second and the third terms. My next simplification step will then therefore be to, to distribute in these rate constant terms. So my left hand side is still my concentration of my linear DNA and that's equal to my original concentration of supercoiled DNA. I still have one in this case now I'm going to be distributing these rate constant terms. So I'm going to have minus the second rate constant divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant times e raised to the power of the negative of the first rate constant times time. Because I'm distributing in this minus sign, I have minus here, but then I have minus minus, which gives me a plus. So I'm going to have plus. In this case, I'm going to have the first rate constant divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant. And this again is equal to e raised to the power of the negative of the first rate constant times time. With this next term, again I'm going to be distributing in all of these rate constants and the minus sign. So for the first term I have minus kf1 divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant. And that's multiplied by e raised to the power of the negative of the first rate constant times time. And then again, because I'm going to be distributing in this minus sign, I have minus minus here, which gives me a plus. 
then I have my first rate constant divided by my second rate constant minus my first rate constant times e raised to the power of the negative of the second rate constant times time. We can simplify this expression that I've just written out now because I have a positive first rate constant and here I have a negative of the first rate constant. These exponentials in these two terms, these, they're both the same and they're both divided by the same denominator. And I have a plus and a minus. And so what that means is that they cancel each other out. And so the final expression that I'll write out here for my concentration of my linear DNA is equal to my initial concentration of my supercoiled DNA. And that's going to be equal to 1. And I'll write it as a plus because what I'll start with is the furthermost right-hand term, which is just the first rate constant, raised or e raised to the power of the negative of the second rate constant times time. And that is going to be subtracted from the second rate constant times e raised to the power of the negative of the first rate constant divided by or times time. And all that is then divided by the second rate constant minus the first rate constant. And what you may have already noticed here with this denominator is that if we had our two rate constants and if they were equal, then that implies that this denominator then, or that would result in this denominator then being equal to zero. And in fact, actually, this top part, if both our rate constants were the same, this top part would actually also be equal to zero. And so what we end up with this is this unphysical solution with our result because the second term then ends up being 0 over 0. And so we would probably then set a restriction on the solutions to this since we don't want an unphysical result or we don't want to handle unphysical results with this, is that we would have to then state that our two rate constants cannot be equal in order to get a valid solution out of this this derivation for the concentration of the linear DNA or for our product. With this restriction in mind on the values of our two rate constants, let's now look at a plot of these integrated rate law expressions where we've set the rate constants to be close to being equal to each other. And what we see in this plot is pretty much what we would expect to see where we have our supercoiled DNA that's going to be in blue, our open circle DNA that's going to be shown in red, and then finally our linear DNA that's shown in green, and that's what we've plotted over here. We've got linear, we've got open circle, and we've got our supercoiled. And it's essentially what, exactly what we would expect to see, or it would look like something that we would imagine we would see where, since the supercoiled is the first part and it's going to be just consumed, and as it turns into open circle, then we see this exponential decay, which is this term that we see right here. We see that we start with some amount, and there's some exponential decay that happens. In terms of the open circle DNA, we had that it's, because it's our intermediate, we have it being produced from the supercoil as it's converted, and then it's also consumed. And so we would expect that at short times t, which is what I'm trying to indicate here, so this is small t, then what we would see is that we would see this growth in this intermediate because we don't have very much of the open circle DNA to convert into the linear DNA, and so the rate of the growth is just dependent upon how much supercoiled has turned into the open circle. But then after a while, so any time that's now moving out from this maxima, which is then going to occur right here, then what happens is that since the supercoiled has now been consumed, then that means there's no more open circle that's now coming into play. And so then now it's just open circle that's being consumed. And so we get then this decay that happens as it's converted into the linear DNA. And then, of course, for the linear DNA, the growth of it starts out to be very small, which is what we can see right here. So it's not exponential growth that immediately matches the supercoil because there's the intermediate that it has to move through first. But eventually it does move into exponential growth and that at large times t, which is basically these times that are out here, we see that since everything is converted into the linear DNA, then it basically is all that's left inside our, our system. All the supercoiled is converted into open circle, and then it's all converted into linear DNA.